Today we're going to check out another budget mechanical keyboard from Moto Speed, and this time it's the CK101. I picked this one out because I thought the images might catch some people's attention because of how it looks, and I want to make sure that people know what it's all about. Thanks to Banggood.com for providing this keyboard for a review and their continued support, and the links will be in the description. Opening up the box, we have some paperwork including the user manual. We have our micro USB cable, so it's detachable which is nice. A plastic ring keycap puller, and finally the keyboard itself. So straight up, there's no doubt that they've gone for a particular aesthetic here being like the older Apple keyboards with this cylindrical shape at the back, which does prop the keyboard up and gives it some elevation. They even have the circular pieces on the ends which look like buttons, but they're just there for show and don't do anything. Although the reason the Apple keyboards had this was to house the batteries because it was a wireless keyboard. But as we can see here, we have our micro USB port on the rear. There's nothing really wrong with this, but it's a design feature that will catch the eye of some people browsing for keyboards and might pull some in. The one I have here is all silver, so again mimicking an aluminium build, although this also does come in black. The silver on top is in fact metal and is the typical aluminium plate that everything is mounted to. However, the bottom is plastic, which is painted silver, and it's kind of a weird sensation where you get what they're trying to do, but it comes off as very cheap feeling and cheap looking, and really does detract from the whole feel of the keyboard in my opinion. The body itself is actually quite thin, and it's sporting a low profile floating key design, so the switches are slightly exposed from the sides. It would have been pretty interesting to see the board without the bulge at the back, and just have it as a minimalistic keyboard because the rest of the shape is quite nice being simple and rectangular. The keycaps are the standard shine through ones that have the gamery typeface on them. They're pretty difficult to avoid with these types of keyboards as unfortunately it's just become the standard. And these are double shot ABS keycaps. So the clear legend is another piece of plastic so it will never fade away. On the bottom we just have the two flat rubber feet for non-slip. And there is no flip up feet because it already has that fixed angle of elevation. This is a 10 keyless keyboard so we're missing the numpad on the right hand side. As always, it's nice to save some space if you don't absolutely need the numpad. And this also has a completely standard ANSI layout so replacing keycaps will be absolutely no problem. This is available with blues which are clicky and reds which are linear and is what I have here. So there's no tactile bump or click and it's just smooth all the way down. And these have out to move key switches so as expected they're not so smooth and you can feel that bit of friction when pressing the keys down. Now to the lighting. This is marketed as an RGB keyboard, and while it does have red, green and blue, it isn't true RGB in that you can mix them together. It's limited to 7 colours, but I feel it's good enough if you want to just pick a singular colour to match your setup. I personally like to use white backlighting on my keyboards, but it does have quite a purple tinge to it. There's also a bunch of modes and effects that you can play with. The rainbow effects are actually pretty smooth on this keyboard despite only having 7 colours. I've tried similar boards that are much more jarring in these situations. And there's also profiles in which you can make your own lighting setups, which may be useful for identifying particular keys in various programs. Opening up the keyboard is pretty easy with a couple of Phillips head screws on the top. Here's the plastic bottom shell and it's pretty simple. There's a bit of ribbing on the bottom surface for reinforcement, but it's really the cylinder at the back which reduces the amount of flex it would have. And as we can see, it is coated in silver but doesn't cover the whole inside which doesn't really matter at all. The mounting plate is aluminium and is about 1.6mm thick and is again the usual for budget boards. 
The PCB looks clean and looks to have no issues. The SMD LEDs are on the other side, but yeah, nothing really of note here. Overall, it's honestly more of the same from Moto Speed. It's basically just another shape or enclosure that's been added to their 10 keyless lineup without actually adding any features. The build reflects the price. It's very lightweight with the plastic base and 1.6mm thick aluminium plate, which is standard fare for these types of budget mechanical keyboards. So what it really comes down to is the looks. If you like how it looks, then I guess it's something to consider, but you're absolutely sport for choice in the budget market, with many having very similar types of construction. But I don't know, it just feels cheaper than the others and is almost toyish, mainly because of the very plasticky bottom shell which tries to mimic metal, but fails to do so. Although it does have its multicolor lighting, which is RGB to an extent, but it is limited to seven colors, and it does have a bunch of lighting effects and modes, but it does look pretty good in my opinion, and you can always just pick your singular color. This also does come in the blue clicky switches, as said before, which are actually a pretty good switch, but the outer move reds are pretty scratchy. Thanks again to Banggood.com for providing this keyboard for review, and their continued support. It's actually Banggood's 11th anniversary, so they'll have specials and stuff, so keep an eye out for that.